Hey guys, I'm here with the Project Budget Big Turbo Car. Um, I found a loose ball joint, so I'm going to show you guys how to replace the front lower control arm on your Juke. Uh, you can also use the same exact information for the Altima, the Sentra, pretty much anything of a modern Nissan body design, except for the Maximas, um, because they use a different front suspension setup, and also obviously GTRs and 370Zs. So, here's how to install a front lower control arm in your Nissan Juke. <laughs> Let's go over tools. Uh, so this is pretty much what you're gonna need, the impact gun being optional. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you just need a big breaker bar. And also, this is on the assumption that your parts are gonna come apart. If you live in the Northeast like I do, you're gonna run into some problems and you're gonna need some other things, cut off wheels, extra bolts, things like that. But this is basically what you need. You need a 21 millimeter wrench, a 21 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter wrench, an 18 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter socket with an extension, and a 14 millimeter wrench. You're also gonna to wanna to pick up a pickle fork tool. That's this right here. That is to get the ball joint out if you don't have um, certain tools such as uh, air hammer and such. Uh, also a chisel and a big hammer are recommended that will help spread out uh, the part that holds the ball joint in. And that's pretty much what you're gonna need. Impact gun just speeds it up. I'm gonna be using that just because I have access to it, but all the steps are basically the same. Now, if we go under here, you'll see that bolt right there in front of the camera. Uh, that needs to come out, and then if we kind of come over here, that bolt right there, that needs to come out uh, from the underneath as well. And then right behind your rotor, right behind here, there's a 14 millimeter bolt. I'll show you that. This one right here, where my finger is. It might be a good idea for you to go to Nissan and get that replacement bolt nine times out of ten if you live north of the Mason-Dixon line. Um, that is going to strip or it's going to get stuck in there and you're going to need to replace it. I keep spare ones on hand, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but definitely something you might want to look into doing. They're like ten bucks for the nut and bolt. Um, that way you have the exact right one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove all of those and then I'll show you how to get the actual control arm out. All right, so I got the nut off from the ball joint bolt, um, but it is stuck in there. I can't even get it to twist using the impact gun. So what I'm going to do is put this back on about halfway down and then use an air hammer to drive it out. Obviously, you guys at home probably don't have an air hammer, so you're just going to have to use a regular hammer, some PB blaster, and just have at it. Uh, fortunately, I have the tools to take care of this. And like I said before, I also have the extra hardware, so I can go ahead and ruin this one and not really worry about it. So, that is what I am going to do. Now you're probably wondering why am I putting the nut back on halfway. It's so that the tip of the air hammer can actually sit in something instead of bouncing all the way around. It just makes it easier to control. And with me not worrying about if anything gets damaged as far as that nut and bolt go, it's just an easy way to do that. And there's my bolt. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't look damaged, so I actually might be able to just reuse this one and uh, save this one for down the road. So this next bit's going to be kind of hard for me to show you, but you actually have to slide the control arm out. So there's your control arm. You're going to get a pry bar behind the rear mount and pop it forward, and then you kind of just stick a pry bar back in and just pop that side out. It will hang by the ball joint, and that's fine. Um, you're going to want to turn the steering wheel in one of either direction so that it's uh, facing towards you so you can get to the side of the ball joint. And then I'll show you how to do it from there. Because of where I have the camera, I can't get behind it the way I want to. <laughs> Try to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Alright, so now you can see that the control arm is hanging by the ball joint, right? Now, uh, because I have this up just one side of the car, I'm actually going to disconnect my outer tie rod so that I can just turn the knuckle. 
Um, if your car is lifted up equally in the front, you don't need to do that. You just need to turn um, the wheel. So, you know, I like adding complexity to things. So now, this is where the ball joint is over here. Um, like I said before, if you have a chisel, you want to kind of put it in the little seam and give it a whack. Um, that'll open up that sleeve. Fortunately, I have an air hammer, so I'm just going to do it the pneumatic way, which is a little faster. This is also where you're going to want to use that pickle fork tool. Um, I do it without the pickle fork tool just because I have this air hammer, so I can separate this enough to use just the hammer to get that out. But if you don't have access to that, um, then you're going to want to use the pickle fork tool. So once I got that jammed in there, I'll just take my hammer and give it a few whacks. It should come right up. Again, this is a lot easier when the camera's on the way. <laughs> Trying to work around it so you guys can see. There we go. So, control arm out. Now, to put the new control arm in, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, you can slide the back in first and then put the ball joint in. I'm preferable, my preference I should say, is to do ball joint first, just because it can be really hard to fight against like sway bars and stuff to get the suspension to move where you want to get the ball joint in it. So you just give it a few knocks until it's lined up. Take your hardware. And I just catch it. I don't tighten anything until I have everything in just in case I run into a problem. Now to get the back bits in, take some finagling. Um, you're gonna fight with it a little bit. Kind of slot it in, and pull the suspension outward to get it lined up where you want it. And then use pry bars and stuff to kind of get everything in its place. So I've gotten everything in, all the bolts went right in for me, uh, I put the tie rod back on, I put a new nut on that just because I had a new one laying around and make it easier if I ever have to do maintenance on that. Uh, give everything a quick shake after you tighten everything. Uh, if you want torque specs, you can find them floating around on the internet, I just use a Nugga Dugga, um, so I don't torque things down, I just know how tight they need to be off of doing this for a while. So once you do that, you go ahead and just throw the wheel back on, take it for a quick test drive, the alignment probably will be off. Um, so I do recommend getting a new front end alignment after you do a lower control arm. Also, I recommend doing them in pairs. I'm being cheap, so I'm just doing this one side. Um, I can always tackle the other side when I get a free minute. Uh, but that is how you put the lower control arm on your Nissan Juke or Altima or whatever car you have that has this kind of suspension setup. Hi. You made it through a whole video. I appreciate that. You should go check out our other videos. Should also go check out our website, thefastreligion.com. We got like sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff.